Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look and see how to craft a better black and white image in Photoshop. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at converting images to black and white in Photoshop. I have an image here, and this is straight out of the camera. Before I did too much to it, I would make any adjustments to the image that I think that it needs. I'm just going to check the histogram on this, so I'm going to make a curves adjustment, and because I want to be able to edit it if necessary, I'm going to make that as an adjustment layer. So I'll choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to select Curves. Now the histogram in the image is pretty good. Um, it's probably a little bit on the light side here. The whites are very, very white, but the rest of the image is looking pretty good. Might just add a slight S-curve to the histogram just to increase the contrast in the image because I think that this image is going to convert to a fairly shiny black and white because there's a lot of shine in the underlying image and it could be quite an exciting black and white. So I'm just going to close down the curves adjustment there and just check what we've done. So this is it before and this is it after. Just a little bit of extra contrast through the midtones in that image. So to make a black and white conversion for the image, I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Black and White. It would be possible to simply desaturate the image, but this black and white adjustment is a far smarter way of doing it. And the reason for this is that it will allow us to craft the black and white that we want. So here's the black and white adjustment, and you can see that these sliders are not zeroed out. What Photoshop has done is it's already applied a crafted black and white to the image, so it's saying that the reds need to be in this position and the yellows would look better in this position. But we can adjust that if we want to, and we can also create an auto black and white by clicking on this button, and it will do something different to the image. And there are other presets here, so we could look at this image as if it were shot with a blue filter. Well, that's an extremely unhappy result, but we could go darker. We could choose a green filter, which is a very interesting look for this image and one that we might come back to. There's a high contrast blue, which of course is not going to work for this image. The blue filters are just not working at all. And the high contrast red is awful as well. There's an infrared look which might be interesting on landscapes, but it's not working for this image at all. There's a lighter, again, none of that's very nice. Medium black, oh, sorry, maximum black is horrible. Maximum white is not really doing a lot to this image at all. This is a neutral density black and white. This is a red filter, that's not bad and this is a yellow filter. But I'm thinking as a starting point, we could either use default or we could go for this green filter because I think the green filter is actually working pretty well. And then we can adjust the sliders individually. So we can say with the reds, we want the reds to be a bit darker or we want them to be a bit lighter. And I'm actually thinking they could be a bit darker. And then we can individually adjust the yellows in the image and make them lighter or darker and the greens. We've already found that there's some sweet point here in the greens. Cyans, blues, and then magentas. And you can see that in adjusting the blues, we can actually darken this area of the image. If we want to balance it up a little bit more and not have it overly light, then bringing the blues down will help us do that. And then the magentas. And there's some movement in the magentas also in this area of the image. But there's another adjuster here, and this is the adjuster that allows you to target a color under the cursor and alter it. You're altering the color throughout the entire image, but it is another way of making adjustments. Let's click on it here. And then let's go and click on this roof here. And if I move to the left, I'm going to darken those colors in the image. If I move to the right, I'm going to lighten that area of the image and everywhere else where that color appears. 
and you can see in the sliders in the properties box here that we're obviously adjusting the reds because it's the red slider that's moving when I'm moving my cursor in the image. We can adjust the yellow slider by dragging on something that is yellow in the image. But because it's a little hard to see what exactly these colors were, this adjustment tool does let you look at a specific place in the image and just drag to adjust it without having to know what colors are in that area of the image. Now as always, when I've finished with one of these images, I would want to sharpen it. And you can't sharpen masks, so you'll need to flatten or create a flattened version of the image for sharpening. One way to do this is to hold Control Alt Shift and press the letter E. On the Mac, that's Command Option Shift E. That creates a flattened version of the image on its own layer. And then you can go ahead and sharpen it. We'll choose Filter and then Sharpen. And I'm going to use Smart Sharpen. I'm going to size the image so I can see a fair portion of it here. Now we've got a custom sharpening visible here. The amount I don't want to be quite so high because I don't want to get it too grainy. For an image like this, this is fairly sharp any way out of the camera. I would generally go for a fairly low radius. The radius typically should be somewhere in the region of about 0.5 up to about 1.1, 1.2 for a fairly sharp image. The fact that the radius here goes to 54 or something, it's way too high a radius to use. Now if you're finding that you're getting some noise in the image, then you can ask to reduce the noise in the sharpening process and just drag in to reduce the noise. If there's any blur in the image, you can also select to remove Gaussian lens blur or motion blur. And then once we've got our fix, once we've got our sharpening, we can back it off in certain areas. For example, we may want to fade it in the highlight areas or in the shadows. And then we would do that particularly if we're seeing that we're getting some noise in the shadow areas and if we don't want to sharpen it quite so much in those areas so that we can back off the noise if you like. So you can fade in highlights or shadows as you prefer here. And I'm just going to click OK to finish. So there's an image that is a fairly crisp black and white. But let's look now at adjusting an image that's a little bit more subtle that we may not want to get quite such a crisp and shiny look to it. This is an image that was shot in Paris and it has a slightly more ethereal look to it than the one that was shot in Hong Kong. So the conversion for this image is going to be a little bit different. It's already been processed to the extent that it needs to be before I'm going to add the black and white adjustment. So let's just go ahead and choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer and go straight to black and white. And again we have this sort of auto black and white that Photoshop has given us. And this time I'm looking for a more subtle black and white. I'm looking for something that is a lot softer. Now most of the colors in this image are going to be in the yellows. We can see that bringing up the yellows is bringing up those colors and dropping them down is t making them a lot darker. I want to get a little bit of light in here so I'm actually thinking I'm going to wind my yellows up a little bit and let's see where the greens take us. Well there's not a lot of green here but what greens I do have I think I'm going to bring towards the darker end of the scale. And then I have cyans, of which there are not very many at all, perhaps just in this window in here. There are a few blues and they're largely in this area here. That's where I'm really seeing those blues. So I'm going to darken those off a little bit. And then look at the magentas. Well, there's precious little magenta in the image, except really for this sign and over here. So again, I'm going to look for a sweet spot for those. 
and I can finish off by again trying to adjust them manually and just say if I can get a little bit more detail into certain areas of the image if I want to craft this a little bit more stapley. But for this image really what I'm looking for is a more subtle black and white with not so much of an extreme and nowhere near the shine that we had in the previous image. Again I would sharpen this image always before I go to print or put it up on the web but one of the things I'm thinking this image could use is a vignette so I'm going to add a vignette to it and I'm going to actually add it to the original background layer and that's going to then flow through to the black and white layer. So with the background layer selected I'm going to choose filter and then lens correction because it allows me to add a vignette to an image and I'll do that through the custom tab here and here's the vignette slider. I'm just going to turn my grid off because I don't really want to be able to see that and I'm just looking at the color at this stage but the vignette I want is a darkening vignette so I'm just going to drag this amount slider to the left and as I do it's darkening the edges in the image. It's a fairly subtle effect because it's typically used to remove problems from the edge of an image but here we're using it as a creative solution. So once I've done that I'm just going to click OK and that vignette that we added to the color image is actually affecting the black and white too because any darkening of these edges is going to be reflected in the black and white we want to see the before and after I'm going to go to the history panel here and here's our black and white and then here's the black and white with the darkening edges so it's fairly subtle but it is an effect which draws the eye into the center of the image and of course before I sharpen this image I'm going to need to flatten it and I can do that by selecting layer and then either merge visible or flatten image. It's also possible to click on the topmost layer and press Control Shift Alt E. That's Command Option Shift E on the Mac. That creates a flattened version of the image on its own layer but also retains the layer detail in case we wanted to make adjustments to the image. At this point I would sharpen this layer. So there's a way to get two completely different black and white looks in Photoshop. For one we went for a very crisp and shiny look and for this one we've gone for something a little more subtle and a little bit duller if you like because it really suits the subject matter of the image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.